This podcast specifically is about one of my favorite Wyoming characters. She was the first female governor in the history of the United States, Miss Nellie Taylor Ross. I've been calling her Notorious NTR since I first learned about her existence, but no, weirdly, no one else around me has been, you know, picking up that nomenclature. Anyway, she is an icon, and I can't wait to introduce you. First, however, let's take a look at Wyoming women in general and a lot of the firsts that they were the first of. If you're not familiar with Wyoming at all, first of all, how'd you find this podcast? And second of all, I'm so glad you're here because I can't wait to share all the exciting stories that I have about my home state with you. I love my home state, and I love sharing stories about history, and Wyoming this is a pretty cool fact, was the very first state to give women the right to vote. So that means that women's suffrage a good 40 years before anyone else in the country had it. And here's another cool fact. When they were trying to bring Wyoming in as a territory, they told them they'd have to walk back all of their women's suffrage laws. And they basically told them, no, we're not going to do that. They said, we'll stay 100 years out of the union before we come in without our women. The very first woman in U.S. history to cast her vote was in Laramie, Wyoming in 1870. Her name was Louisa Swain, and there's a statue of her downtown now. Another Wyoming first is the first female justice of the peace. The first woman to serve on a jury was in Cheyenne, Wyoming. And finally, the coolest part of all is that when Wyoming became a state in 1890, they retained the right for women to vote and hold public office. So that's the Wyoming that Nellie Taylor Ross had been living in for a while by the time she was poised to become the next governor of the Equality State. We're going to find out how she got to that position a little bit later. So Nellie Taylor Ross was born in St. Joseph, Missouri in 1876. Her first job was that of an elementary school teacher in Nebraska, where she primarily worked with kindergartners. She did a two-year course and got that certificate so that she could be useful in her small community. She also met and fell in love with William Bradford, who would become her husband and later governor of Wyoming. We'll get back to him. Maybe it was her working with kindergartners that gave her the otherworldly patience she was renowned for, but she followed her husband, a lawyer by trade, when he decided to go to the newly formed state of Wyoming out west. Their family grew during this time, with Nellie giving birth to their eldest twins, George Taylor and James Ambrose, in 1903. The couple would, unfortunately, experience the death of their third child, Alfred, in 1905. But finally, there was their youngest child, William Bradford, named for his father, that would be born in 1912. Nellie's husband, William Bradford Ross, was the governor of Wyoming from 1923 until his untimely death just a year later from complications with an appendectomy. So Nellie took office just a few months after her husband's death in 1924. She had refused to campaign and she was in mourning, but she won the election easily because she was a known face on the Democratic circuit. She wouldn't be the only woman to take office after her husband's demise, as Miriam A. Ferguson would do the exact same thing in Texas just a few weeks after Ross. Nellie Taylor Ross remains, and it hurts me just a little bit inside to say this, the only woman to have ever served as governor in the state of Wyoming. And yes, we were the first state to give women the right to vote, and we've only had one female governor. I mean, maybe we need to step it up a little bit more, Wyoming. And yeah, I, I know that her name is a little weird, so let me touch on that real quick. So, it's Taylor, right? Not Taylor. Even the spell check on my computer keeps trying to change it to Taylor. It's not her middle name, though. It's her maiden name. She was born Nellie Davis Taylor in a time when it was common for women to keep their last name and their married name. She gained Ross and lost Davis and became the three-named powerhouse that we know and love. See? Notorious. Ross was popular enough to win the special election to gain her gubernatorial seat. Because her politics were considered progressive, her time in office was full of upheaval and change. It was the 1920s, there was a lot of change going on in the U.S. But Ross's platform continued her husband's support for tax cuts, governmental assistance for poor farmers, banking reform, and more laws protecting children, 
women workers and miners. Another cause she was passionate about was the abolishment of child labor. She petitioned for a federal constitutional amendment to keep kids out of the coal mines. Nellie Taylor Ross would lose re-election, and she would say herself she believed the reason for her narrow defeat lied with her support for prohibition. A great fact about her, in her later years though, she stayed active in politics and she worked closely with those who disagreed with her on prohibition. The collaboration between her and both parties was admirable, even so she would be named the vice chairman of the Democratic Party later in life. The other thing most people know about Nellie Taylor Ross is that she served as the director of the U.S. Mint. Appointed to the title by FDR after his election, Ross served in this capacity as the first woman to hold the role, something she was probably pretty used to at that point, <laughs> in 1933. She served five full terms in the position and retired in 1953. Her four consecutive five-year terms spanned the Great Depression, World War II, and the Korean War, said the National Mint official website. Mrs. Ross was responsible for several innovations in coinage manufacture, the construction of three new buildings, and management of a greatly expanded bureau, also from the Mint. We have Nelly to thank for such riveting coins as the very notion of a proof coin collection being available to the public. That was her. She also helped with the designing of the Jefferson Nickel in 1938. It was designed by engraver Felix Schlag, and the Roosevelt Dime was another that she oversaw, designed by Mint Chief Engraver John Sinnock. So all of those were minted during her administration. We have her to thank for those coins. Nellie Taylor Ross is remembered fondly by the U.S. Mint and coin collectors around the globe. She started her tenure in politics right here in the barely estate, Wyoming. retirement, Ross wrote articles for women's magazines and traveled extensively. She made her last trip to Wyoming in 1972 at the age of 96. Nellie Taylor Ross died in Washington, D.C. in 1977 at the age of 101, and she's buried in the family plot in Lakeview Cemetery in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Today, Nellie's grave in Cheyenne is covered with flowers and tokens from those who appreciate the first, and so far only, woman governor of the Equality State. And that's a little strange to me, considering I grew up as a little girl in Wyoming and I felt like the world was my oyster. Where is our next Nellie Taylor Ross to step up and take the title? <sighs> Sorry, I get a little passionate sometimes. <laughs> Even into her retirement, the elegant lady governor, as she was called in popular culture, campaigned for women's rights, progressive ideals, and more money in the pockets of poor farmers and miners. Those all seem like pretty good values to uphold in the name of Notorious NTR. <laughs> <laughs> 